welcome back to Alaskan Homemaker. I'm Mary. Today, we are going to make some sourdough pumpernickel bread. In the background, I've got some creme brulee cooling from our last video, which if you didn't see, I'll link in the description box below. But right now we're gonna make some pumpernickel, sourdough pumpernickel bread. So we need 226 grams of sourdough starter. I have about 164 grams, so I am going to, this is some rye flour, I'm going to add some rye flour and some water to make it for my starter. Okay, and that's 230 grams, it's a little over, but that's okay. I'm going to give this a little stir. I didn't quite have enough starter, so I just added a little bit more flour and water to make up for it. Okay, and I'm going to zero out my scale. And we need 112 grams of water. There we go, 112 grams. And we need 100 grams of rye flour. So we're gonna zero out our scale again. This is freshly ground rye flour. Okay, so we're going to give this a mix. I love making sourdough. It's so healthy for our families. And there's so many things you can make with it. It's wonderful. Okay, and this is like our Levain, our overnight Levain. So we're gonna let this sit on the counter. And it'll be ready for us in the morning to add more things to. And I also boiled some coffee. We need to boil some coffee for our sourdough pumpernickel bread and I'm gonna let it cool overnight so that we'll be able to put it in our bread tomorrow. If you don't like using coffee, you can just use water. The coffee contributes to the dark color of the pumpernickel bread, um, but if you don't wanna use coffee for any reason, you can just use water. So I'll see you back in the morning. Good morning, friends. It's the next morning and our Levain is all bubbly. So we're gonna get the rest of the ingredients in here. zero outer scale and we're going to put two teaspoons of salt I guess I didn't need to Z it out yet there we go we need two tablespoons of cocoa powder You're supposed to have malted barley syrup, but the recipe says that you can use honey and 
molasses in place of the malted barley syrup. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna eyeball two tablespoons of molasses. and two tablespoons of honey. Let's see, we need 566 grams of our cold coffee. There we go. Okay. We need 56 grams of breadcrumbs. This is my sourdough breadcrumbs. Oops, there's a little too much. There we go. We need 100 grams of rice flour. This is whole wheat flour. Here we go. We need 280 grams of the rye flour. I'm just going to put a little bit of the whole, more whole wheat. Okay. And we're going to put 280 grams of regular flour. A zero outer scale. And that's two eighty one, so that's close enough. All right, now we've got all of our ingredients, so we're going to give this a mix. I'm making two loaves. This is Chad's favorite bread, pumpernickel rye bread. And I almost forgot, caraway seeds are what really give rye bread their flavor. It's not the actual rye, the caraway is what gives it that classic rye flavor. And Chad loves rye bread. So we're gonna get four tablespoons of caraway seeds in here. I've made this recipe exactly for what it calls for. And uh, the dough was a little wet on the wet side. So I, the next time that I made it, I added a little extra flour and it did a little better for me. It rose up a little bit better. So 
if it's looking like it's a really wet dough, I'm probably gonna add a bit more flour of the regular flour in here. Okay, and you guys, you can see that it's a very wet, hydrated dough. So I am gonna add some more flour until it's a good consistency. Because it does a little better for me when it's not as wet of a dough. So I probably added in a half a cup just now and I'm gonna add some more, probably a half a cup more. It's still quite sticky, so I'm gonna add some more flour. The spread already smells good from those caraway seeds. And it's still a bit sticky, see that? It's really sticky, so I'm gonna add some more flour. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with that amount. It is still sticky and I don't mind a little stickiness, but I just don't want it super sticky. So for this recipe, I just always adds more white flour than it calls for until it's the consistency that I like. Okay, and now I am going to clean this bowl. I wanna have a clean bowl for my dough to rise in. So I'm gonna get this dough onto the counter. All my bowls are taken up. I have some sourdough pizza and pizza crust in the refrigerator. So I'm gonna clean this bowl out. And I'll be back. Okay, I've got a clean bowl and I'm gonna put some oil in the bottom. And I'm just gonna smear that around so there's a coating going on there. And now we're gonna get our dough into the bowl. And I'm just gonna let that oil get on that side and then flip it over. That way the oiled side will be on top. And then we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna let that sit for an hour and then we're gonna do some stretch and folds. We're gonna do our first stretch and fold. The dough's been sitting for about an hour. We're just gonna do four stretches all around the bowl, north, south, east, and west. And you can wet your hands if you need to. holding on to the bottom of the dough so it can stretch out a little bit more. Then I'm just gonna round it out a little bit. So it's a nice ball. There we go. And now we're gonna cover it back up and let it sit for another hour and do our next stretch and fold. We're doing our second stretch and fold and I've got a little glass of water here. I'm gonna wet my hands down. And we're gonna do four folds around the bowl again, north, south, east, and west. And I'm gonna hold part of it down. This is Pretty strong dough. Okay, I did all four sides and now I'm just gonna round it out a bit by tucking it. Getting a nice ball shape. There we go. The original recipe doesn't call for caraway seeds, but we like that rye taste. 
so we add the cura seeds. That's ni the nice thing about making your own bread, you can customize it. Now we're just gonna put this silicone lid back on and let it rest for another hour. It's time for our third stretch and fold. Our dough has risen nicely, so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get it shaped, pre-shape it and shape it. Looks like it's doing really good, rising a bit. And we're gonna go ahead and get our banneton baskets ready. I've got a little tiny sieve and I'm gonna put some rice flour in here. I like to get the edges first and then do the middle part with some of the rice flour on there. Okay, that one looks good. I've got a little tiny bowl of water and I'm gonna put spread some of the water on the counter and some on my hands. We're gonna get our bread out. Okay, we're gonna divide our bread in half. Shape, we're just going to bring the dough up and into the middle and then flip it over and then drag it against the counter with our hands so that we can get a little bit of tension in our bread. There we go, that looks good. Okay, now we're going to do this one. So we're going to just pinch the sides in gather them up and then we're gonna flip it over and then drag it across the counter make the top a little smoother okay and now we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes and let this rest right here on the counter and then we're gonna do the final shaping. We're ready for our final shaping. In the original recipe, they don't do a fridge, a ferment in the fridge, but I, I like to do a ferment in the fridge. So we're just gonna put the smooth side on at the bottom and we're gonna basically do what we did in the pre-shape, bring all the edges into the middle. and flip it back over and then smooth out the top. And then we're gonna get that into our banneton basket. And I bought these little shower caps on Amazon and I like these for the refrigerator because then you can have a little bit of space where it doesn't touch your dough, but it's all contained. So there's one. And now I'm gonna re-wet my hands and flip our other one over and do the same thing. We're going to flip the smooth side over on the bottom. We're going to get our little shower cap on our bread. And now we're going to get this into onto the top shelf of our fridge until tomorrow. morning friends it's time to get our bread into the oven so I'm gonna I have a piece of parchment paper here and I'm gonna crinkle it up it helps
helps to round it out a little bit more to get into our Dutch oven. My Dutch oven, I preheated at 425 uh, for a while until it got up to temp. And I'm getting used to this new oven. So I have the temperature at 425 and I'm hoping that that will be a good temperature. We're gonna get our bread. It's all puffed up. I'm just gonna get some of this rice flour off of here, brush it off with a pastry brush. And now we're gonna score our bread with our bread long. Now we've got our scoring. We're going to turn our timer on to 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, so we are going to get the lid off of our Dutch oven. And there's our bread. This is the exciting part. You can see the oven spring. And now we're going to close the oven up. And I think I'm going to leave it at 425 for the last 20 minutes also. So we'll go ahead and set our timer for 20 more minutes. Our timer just went off and we're ready to pull our bread out. Here's our freshly baked pumpernickel sourdough rye bread. Is there anything better than freshly baked bread wafting through the house? It smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. I'm gonna let this cool and then I'm gonna show you the crumb shot. Here's our delicious sourdough pumpernickel rye bread. And now we're gonna cut it open and look at the crumb shot. And there's the crumb shot of our sourdough pumpernickel bread. Now we'll cut some up. Okay, 
I'm ready for a taste. It's so delicious. Perfect for Reuben sandwiches. Thank you all for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.